just completing the uh, the winter Steve Power round. Thanks so much for joining us, Jack. Uh, can you tell us how are you how are you feeling after completing? Um, now, now that I've slept, yeah, I, I'm definitely um, I'm feeling a little bit better, hundred percent. I'm starting to recover, which is is really positive already. Obviously, my feet are a little bit tired than I was anticipating, but um, yeah, I th- I think it takes a little while for these sort of things to really sort of sink in. It wasn't until like I, I got a bath earlier on and then went, holy cow, I could just just managed to do that. But, so yeah, I'm, I'm feeling all right now, but I've managed to get a bit of good food in me and, and a bit of solid rest. I think I've left the safer much today, if I'm really honest. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You booked a, a few days off work, I believe. Yeah, I'm not in work until Friday, um, which is amazing because... Uh, yeah, I, I, well, I definitely wouldn't want to have been on the hill, working on the hill, to like um, having just done that for sure. I don't know how um, how up I'd be for it. So yeah, I've got a good few days rest now, an opportunity just to really recover and, and just to take it easy, which is quite nice. And the weather's yeah. not that good, so that definitely makes it easier. Anybody that's looking at something like a winter steep power round, you know, at any point in in the future, um, basically, uh, what's your experience and uh, and uh, you know how how crucial has that been? for your preparations yeah so um I, i've worked and, and climbed and, and ran in, in the lakes and scottish mountains for, for a long long time um and i've been really fortunate for that um a lot of that has been sort of personal experience so um just a really good understanding of of what the winter does to the, the mountains particularly here in the lakes obviously but um i've also done a, a winter bob graham very sort of about this time last year where uh, i did an anti-clockwise round and, and set the sort of record for that as well and, and that was a really big learning experience for me because I got an opportunity to just sort of gauge of, of what it feels like to to run uh, in that environment especially over sort of winter uh, and then sort of throughout the course of the year I, I work again on the hills so it's just bringing that sort of knowledge um, across to a winter environment but I spent a lot of particularly the last four or five months running in the hills especially when it's been snowy or, or sort of it's been winter, if you like, then that's definitely been really, really key to my training for the round and the build up to it as well, because you, I think I spent about, it's just shy of about 20 odd hours in the darkness out of the whole 47 hours that I was there. So being able to move in the dark over that sort of ground, particularly um, some of like the, the harder sections with, uh, like Swirl's Edge, for example, it's got quite a lot of snow on it and um, you just need to be able to have a really good level of experience, a good level of knowledge. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really, really fortunate for that, obviously, um, like I say, and I've spent a long time building that that base and that experience up. It's not something that I've sort of just done overnight, if you like. It's it's took a long time and um, I think that you really have to think about it as well and understand that, you know, a wet day in the summer can be a very different day to a wet day in winter because of obviously the, the elements and stuff like that, that that can come for it in terms of the kit in comparison to something which is a wet summer's day i guess you're carrying or you uh, you're certainly um you know preparing for the worst a lot more yeah so um it's it's the uk isn't it the weather the weather you can sort of just um it can throw anything at you and it's so changeable that we sort of uh pack in the van for um for the round we sort of had almost like two sets of kit ready to rock and roll and one being sort of like a running kit if you like and that was just light warm kit and, and lightweight running stuff that you maybe would see but also a little bit more heavier duty kit um and my partner Kirsty was amazing in in sort of just understanding potentially where I would and wouldn't need that and we uh again you maybe wouldn't carry a pair of gloves I think I've worn my gloves most of the time on the round so you do have to adapt your your kit to what you're carrying or around just because it is winter so uh, I went through a, quite a large amount of socks and I changed my trainers quite a bit because obviously like just looking after you, yourself is more important um, you get wet and cold feet and that can lead to other problems so we um, we spent quite a bit of time in terms of prep wise looking at the kit and what we would need and what we would use and um I get the, the trip with that, I suppose, again, at the time and that time of year is that you, you're trying to almost avoid sweating as well, because obviously that then can potentially make you quite cold as well. So there's a bit of a fine balance. And I think um, I, I felt personally that we really, we really, really nailed it. And the support crew were really good at just looking out for those signs of, of being cold and making sure that I'm warm. And if our gloves did get wet, that we were changing them regularly and, and that sort of stuff. And that, that really sort of helped 
it helps you personally just keep yourself moving if that makes sense um at the time that you started and talk us through each section would that be okay yeah yeah of course yeah so um the sort of classic uh steve parman starts at moat hall in keswick um and then i split it into eight legs um for the support crew but actually um took it as seven for myself and now it becomes a bit apparent sort of later on in the round so the first leg is um yeah goes up towards that little man skidor and blen catherine comes down into falcard and a very similar sort of line to like the leg one bob graham and the, the crew on that as we sort of we sort of spoke about the weather and just the the pitches were just incredible and if anybody's seen them then it's uh, yeah they're just immense it's, it's massive cloud inversion and yeah it was 100% worth stopping um and a, a really great leg fantastic bunch of people on that i like to again very similar to uh, maybe bob graham in that it follows that Helvel and plateau uh, with a couple of out and backs one over to katsy cam where we descended down swirls which was was really really great we had quite a lot of uh, card ice and snow and it, it made for a little bit harder going actually than i anticipated because we had to carry obviously spikes and a running axe for that to, to take into account for those conditions uh, and the crew did a, a great job at kind of for me and then it goes out towards St. Sundays, and then we've got a, a bit of a cheeky descent off St. Sundays into Heart Stop, and then um, it goes out to Heart Stop, and then you've got like four or five Wainwrights just over there. It sort of goes over to like Kidsy, Ramsey, and a few others before dropping into Red Squeeze. Um, that was a really great leg. Just we we saw loads of deer, and it was it was super quiet, and it was just sort of coming towards that sort of sunset period of time. So I was just about to go into my my first night, which if I'm really honest, I was really quite excited about. Uh, and then it's actually the, that sort of, this, the next leg is, is quite, um, it's quite fun, just goes up red squeeze and over towards like Fairfield and nips off into uh, Grasmere via Great Rig and that. So a little bit of road running, which it, I didn't, if I'm really honest, it didn't actually, um, I didn't know how I'd feel about that. You're only about 70 or so, 80K into the round at that point. You've not, it feels like you've done a lot and it probably sounds like it, but in the, the bigger picture you've not actually done a huge amount of scent but actually running on the roads was really nice got an opportunity to just pick up my pace and and to just sort of stretch off my legs a little bit so it was really really great and ran into to little langdale uh, from there did a, a, an amazing amazing leg had some some fantastic people i had a, a lady who traveled three and a half hours uh, from lot Lomond to come support me which i was completely blown away by um, so if Jamie, if you're watching this, thank you. Um, and uh, it goes up Weatherlam Edge and then over towards like Coniston, Dow Crag and uh, Greyfriars and that sort of area and dropped into Rhinos. And uh, I think I got into Rhinos um, sometime around two o'clock in the morning. And that's where I took my first bit of rest. It took about two and a half hours in total with sort of 20 minutes either side to just sort of faff around, change my socks, change my clothes, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and uh, I managed to get about an hour and a half's kip there or thereabouts. And felt really good at that point. Um, and then the next two legs is probably the, the crux of the whole route. And there's a lot of technical ground. Um, originally on the schedule, I'd hoped to hit hit that um, in daylight uh, because it's much, much easier if you've, anyone's been over like the crinkles and both fell and that. It's a very rocky, rocky environment. Um, and it's it can be really slow going. And... Now, because I was so far up on the schedule, uh, it meant that we, we were just going to have to set off a little bit earlier than anticipated. And again, the support crew on that were, were incredible. They were, they met me three or four hours early. Someone had travelled from Burnley to come and help me, which was, again, was equally in incredible. And, you know, they left home at one. So, again, I couldn't thank them enough. Uh, we set off from there. So, Rhinos is, is a massive leg. It's Rhinos um, to Stihead, and it takes in, like, Crinkles, both foul. Uh, drops over towards Esk and then out to High Rays and probably one of the harder climbs um, that I've I've sort of I've done before on a recce and I've helped on previous rounds is drops off the sort of a side of High Rays and it just climbs straight up uh, Gallimara which was incredible um, because it's one of those where you sort of you could almost put your hands and feet on the ground and, and pull up it was a stiff old pull. Uh, especially sort of like going into the, the latter stages of that. Um, but then it sort of tips in again. It tips, goes over towards like Scarfells and, and Scarfell Pike, which again is one of my favourite areas. Uh, the Western Fells and the lakes are fantastic. So I love, I've got no 
no hardship being in that environment because I think it's just a great place to be. It's a wild and testing environment, especially when you've got a bit of fog and the ground's really wet and, and that contributed to a little bit slower going than I'd have anticipated. But again, the conditions dictate what how fast you're going to move on the ground. And, and we sort of all agreed that it was better to just err on the, the caution as being slow and safe as opposed to having a bit of an epic. Um, so from Stihead, the, the support crew change. I actually stopped for about 30 seconds, just enough to drink a Capri Sun as well. That was that was literally it. Um, I had a, a group of friends come in who met me from uh, met me at Stihead and the guys that had just done that previous leg, they ran into Seathway and um, the other guys carried on, if that makes any sense. It was a bit of a, a crew change. Uh, and again, just another amazing leg, leg seven, just amazing. So it follows a little bit more of the Bob Graham. It sort of does a couple of little out and backs over to... Um, over towards like Gable and, and that sort of area and um, out to like Red Pike. You get like three or four, a little cluster of three or four Wainwrights really quickly. It's a fantastic feeling because you've spent most of that sort of 10 hours since leaving Rhinos just running for a long time to pick a Wainwright to run for a little bit longer to grab another one before you've got quite a big old drop uh, down to Ennerdale and then another big old climb back up to high style. And we had a couple of options, to be honest, um, to descend off high style. So um, just based on the conditions and, and more how I was feeling, we opted or I, we opted with uh, Steve to descend the, the T-line, which is a cheeky little fell runner's line just off the side of high style. It, it is quite technical, but by that point, we were below the cloud and we both agreed that it would be much quicker than sort of running back around to high crag and down the, the slippy wet path there because... That would have been quite greasy and, and I think it was a really good decision because it saved quite a bit of time. It meant that some of the time that I'd lost earlier on in that day, um, we'd managed to make up just in that descent, which was, was wicked. My knees were a little bit less grateful for it, but I think that we we managed to sort of pull it back a little bit. And then, yeah, into Buttermere. Um, Buttermere was a great feeling because I hadn't actually had any support really or, or seen change of clothes or anything like that for about 15 or so hours. So it's a big, it's the crux of the whole route. You know, it's a massive chunk of the whole, I think in total it's about 50K and sort of six and a half to 7,000 meters of ascent. So it's a massive, massive chunk to um, to sort of miss. And then the glory leg, the, the final leg, that was the, uh, that was fun. Again, a great group of people. There was more people actually came out to support on that than I'd anticipated. People come out at like about midnight um, to help it which was just awesome and the atmosphere was incredible and the energy was was great the climb up to uh witless I, I love that climb anyway i don't know why but i do i think it's just a great a great climb i, I a bit of pop noodling me of all things in the world and i've had a, a capri sun again and um i i felt really just energized and that sort of second wind if you like um and yeah, we we made the big push. The, the wins on that leg were a lot more exciting than we were anticipating actually going over towards like Grasmere. They were probably about sort of 40 or so, 50 mile an hour wins. And, and um, it definitely took my breath away for a little bit because it was all, it always felt like it was a headwind. It always felt like it was blowing you back a little bit. And um, I, I think that for me personally, I was a little bit grateful for that because it, it just made that challenge, you know, it made it that little bit harder. It made you that little bit more worthwhile when you, when you got to the summit. But not, that, not to say that I wasn't grateful for the fact that I, um you know that I, I i had it on my back because that helped a little bit as well and and then yeah it's just the last few way rights you do a little cheeky out and back to sail crag hill and then you've sort of got like sand hill um the other one at the back which i've forgotten the name of but it'll come to me before you go out to hobgarten and then, uh, we had a nice little moment on grisdale which is the last uh peak of the round and then it's a it's a good sort of four miles or so down into Keswick. So you sort of follow a nose off Grisdale straight into, into Bass and and then before you know it, uh, briefly even, and then before you know it, you're, you've are you just got like a two and a half mile run into uh, Keswick. The descent off Grisdale was was tough, actually. I won't lie, my knees were were feeling it. My, I've, I picked, I had a little bit of like um, shin splints had sort of come about 30 or K before. So the, the team were fantastic at just keeping me moving at that point and, and just get me get me moving when I needed. And it was great to actually pick up a bit of pace on the road into Keswick. And yeah, we finished in Keswick, um, I think about sort of 10 past five-ish or something like that. Yeah. Um, which is, again, is it's, it's anyone who's ever done anything from Moat Hall, it's such a great feeling when you get to see it again because, you know, it's, a, it's a, a really great moment. And then, yeah, it was, it was yeah, just the most awesome day in the fells that I could have ever asked for. It's, you know, just a great run with great people doing something that I, I really enjoyed. So yeah, there's so many amazing little moments and the whole round that 
I could be really hard to like. You know, I could be here all day just telling you about them. To be honest. Yeah, yeah. The um, the 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 pitches uh, as well. The conditions look uh, like you had a bit of everything. Really, you had some great uh, some great weather, and and then uh, the weather kind of closed in a bit. Can you tell us a little bit about that side? Yeah. Um. So it, the the weather is the weather in it. We everyone loves yeah. to whinge about the weather in the UK, don't they? And I, <laughs> I've had I had this like little little window, and it's all luck, you know. It's all total luck because yeah. you've had stuff twelve hours, twenty four hours before. Then uh, it could have been a really really different two days for sure. Uh, but the, the weather just made things. It doesn't make it easier at all. But yeah. certainly, the difference in the first twenty four hours to the second twenty four hours was definitely showed in terms of just the pace and, and sort of my morale if you like um you know the, the wet and slippy rocks over sort of the crinkles and and scarf fells made for tough going and um not to take you know not to say that it would be any easier but obviously if it's not slippy then it's certainly going to be a little bit easier for sure you know it's not as sort of yeah. miserable if that makes sense yeah now the you mentioned about uh, the spikes we were in them a lot on the on the mountains there or were they uh were they just kind of coming out for for the really bad conditions underfoot yeah so um we as as part of the the sort of cruise kit to carry we, we set up a, a safety bag and um, within the safety bag we had spikes um the sort of spikes themselves were predominantly there for the descent of Helvellyn into Swirl's Edge because it can be or had been or is, shall I say, rather uh, quite icy at the moment. I'd been up a few days before and I've got friends who work in the area and I've been sort of, they'd been great at sort of giving me sort of on the ground um, knowledge of what the conditions were like. So uh, it, to be honest with you, I only used them once um, for that, in, mostly in part because the the rest of the ground was it was either just patchy stuff or it, it wasn't anything that we needed to really worry about too much. Anything we did come across was really hard. and I had three or four people on each leg, so... It, we, they just ran ahead and I would just follow in the steps. But in that aspect, there wasn't a huge amount of requirement for them other than for that sort of like little tacky descent off um, swirls. But we carried them as a as a bit of a need, if you like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in terms of the support uh, crews and uh, the paces, how important were they to you? Oh, Jesus, yeah. Like, you know, it, I just wouldn't have been able to do it without them. You know, there's, there's so much that goes on behind the scenes that I think... Um, you know, as as runners, we don't get to see. And I quite literally put my phone on airplane mode and I had no idea what was going on. And the, these are people who don't, some of them didn't know me, but a lot of people did, were just instrumental in it and, and how they sort of adapted their plans to their day to be able to get out on time. And there's, you know, a couple of little moments where um, because I was up on my schedule for quite a bit, uh, a lot of people couldn't make it and other people were sort of moving around. And, and a good example of that is leg seven, for example, the gentleman that came out and uh, he'll he'll fig- never forgive me for calling him a gentleman. Um, but um, <laughs> he, really good friend, Steve, he'd already helped out on two legs previously. Uh, another friend was unable to make it and he stepped in at the last minute to, to help me out on leg seven, which was incredible, you know, and a um, big believer that he potentially saved the round because I'd have had to navigate that on my own somewhat 37 35 ish hours in which would have been a bit of an ask um so yeah the crew were, were instrumental we kept the pace going and, and just kept me kept me moving and, and keeping the morale high and, and sort of checking in with me i think that you know a massive amount of of uh people really contributed to the to the wider picture and my girlfriend as well who who just did an incredible job at meeting me at the right checkpoints and making sure that the food was ready and that we were really utilizing and not wasting time do you know we weren't just sitting around there was there was food there people the crew were running ahead a couple of minutes before the end of each leg to start that sort of transition and the changeover period and there's a lot of that is just down to their experience of supporting on rounds as well do you know um, so yeah percent yeah it's, it was um you know, really kind of switched on it, it was really. seamless absolutely seamless yeah like crew were there ready to go the bags were switched over do you know and and obviously we do everything we can from our side of things to make that as easy for them as possible but i guess what we often forget or i i certainly often forget is that the, these are people who have who maybe aren't training for a round but are trying to keep up with somebody who has trained for a round at a specific pace or a specific time and then they're carrying all the stuff that you're giving them as well. And um, it's hard to remember that, isn't it? But actually, everyone was second to none. They were brilliant. Do you know, everyone just, yeah, couldn't fault people. It was great. Just mm-hmm. ramming gels in me or giving me something. I think 
a friend gave me Battenberg. It's never tasted so good. It's, honestly, it was a phenomenal thing. Yeah, there was a couple of random things as well where I was like, oh my God, that's just so good. Yeah, someone gave me a mouthful of like Coke. I was like, oh, this is heaven. Do you know, it's all those little moments, isn't it? Those little gems. But Yeah, it is. Yeah, it certainly makes a difference when you're, when you're being at it, you know. Yeah. It felt like that, you know. Yeah, um, Battenberg wouldn't be my first choice, let's put it that way, but... Yeah, coming down Scarfell, and it was just like, do you want a bit of Battenberg? I was like, yeah, I just want the whole lot. Yeah, like, that's it. Like, 100%. You, need to, you just need something else, you know, to, to get yeah. into your fuel, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, in terms of the uh, the fell running community, what means to you to be part of the fell running community? And, uh, what do you think of the fell running community? Oh, geez. Oh, um, it's amazing, isn't it? There's nothing like this in the entire world. I don't think. I, I think that you, you know, I, I had somebody travel from, you know, three and a half hour drive to come and support me. I was running for less time than she was driving to support me, which I think is a testament to the, to the value of the community within the lakes and that people are just willing to give up their own time to come and support somebody who they don't know, um, and to contribute to their success and. <laughs> And, and often in some cases, potentially a detriment to their own personal lives. And I think I had 20 plus people of, of which maybe there's an argument, probably about 10 of them I didn't know, you know, would come out and met me in random places like Rhino's Pass at one o'clock in the morning to go and spend 10 hours running, you know, across a wet, cold you know, mountain with a bloke who you don't know nothing about and just... Yeah, I think that it's it's unreal, and and um, I again consider myself to be very fortunate to be a small part of that. And uh, I just yeah, I think it's brilliant. Everyone's psyched. Everyone wants to contribute to to somebody else's success, and I think that that's um that's an incredible, credible thing. And I don't believe there is anything else like it in the country. Do you know? No, I I I, I agree with you there. It's um, there's not many not many things that in life really that somebody will just drop everything. Uh, yeah. you know, and uh, just to be, um, you know, uh, up in the mountains and helping somebody else, you know, and that's, uh, it is absolutely wonderful, you know. I was, I was talking about that with um, with someone on the last leg and we were sort of talking about supporting Bob Graham. Last year I did the, I did the Bob Graham, which was great. I went to Bob Graham and sort of my promise to myself was that I was going to go and support five people, one person for each leg on their Bob Graham to sort of give something back and, um I got a message from a fellow that I was supporting earlier on in the year. And he said, look, you know, I'm, I'm running a couple of hours behind schedule and uh, the wind's a bit, which a bit this, a bit that. And I think that the conversation we had was like, yeah, sound, don't worry, I'll be there. And he, and he was running down South and he said he had no I'm trying to think now. So he was saying to me that he had less hassle getting people he didn't know from the lakes to come and support him than he had around his own. And he, he was blown away by the, the drive and the sort of um, the camaraderie within the foul running community across, across the lakes. And I think he was quite humbled by that. And it was a great leg as well. You know, like he, he did really, really well. And but it was fantastic to be a part of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it is something which um, I say, you know, it's why one of the reasons why I always kind of like really try and jump at these interviews while it's all kind of fresh. Cause it's um it's just kind of like yeah just just um uh, seeing you know kind of a little bit of a glimpse of it is uh it's really powerful you know it's really uh, some quite something you know um uh in terms of the main challenges uh for for you in terms of basically um when when things kind of got uh, tough and uh, you know out there on the mountains was there any point where you kind of like were were having second thoughts or thinking what the hell am I doing out here. <laughs> yeah. um, I, don't, I don't know if I ever had any like moments um, when I, I sort of I felt I mean there's always going to be moments when you're a little bit locked into the pain cave you know and you're a little bit sort of sitting in the in the hurt locker and, and that but I don't think I ever had any moments where I I thought you know I'm, I'm not going to be able to do this it was definitely a little bit a few moments where I thought I could have picked better things to be doing with us right now but um, you know there, there wasn't um, a huge amount of moments and I think it is about you know, um, I, I guess I've got a couple of things that I had to remember. And the first is that I've got people who don't know me and um, I, I want to be positive and, and sort of make their experience as great as possible. And, and also remembering that they've given up the time to help me. But yeah, it, it, it's so hard and around that length because you just don't know. Um, you, there's so many variables and things that can change. I think there's probably maybe one or two moments where I thought, it, you know, the time is slipping a little bit more than I would like. But again, I, I don't. Um, I think I just sort of, yeah, tried to sleep. My friends are sort of saying yesterday and this morning, sorry, like going, one minute you'd be like, this is really, really hard. And then you'd be like, but it's so much fun. 
so it's just trying to stay in that that mindset of, of yeah i'm enjoying this this is what i've come for and i think that when you're setting off on a round like that uh, you know a, a good proportion of your your training should or should be about you know men keeping yourself mentally and remembering that i've signed up for that and when it gets hard that's what you've actually you've come for you know and, and that. so yeah i don't know I, there was definitely no moments i don't think where i sort of i never really thought about it as the bigger picture i just sort of ran to the next leg if that makes sense and and then ran to the next one and Buttermere came really quick and Keswick came, you know, not as quick as maybe I'd like, but it came, yeah, it came quick. And, and yeah, it was, it was a good sort of, from that side of things, I felt all right. You know. Yeah. The, uh, the strategy that you kind of, did you have like a bit of a pacing strategy in mind uh, and how did that kind of keep to it? Yeah. So obviously I had a schedule for each leg um, and as people will probably tell you, I'm not very good at writing them. I'm, um, I, I don't. Um, I I knew that I was always going to be a little bit faster than I anticipated. Um, but I'm sort of not one of those people to sort of uh, to write something a little bit too ambitious, you know. And and that sort of um, it was great to chat to Paul Wilson about that actually, you know, uh, briefly about the schedule and, and that. But I'd rather be ahead than sort of be chasing the time. So for for me, it was just sort of the, the times are just the guideline. And if I was ever up a little bit more, then great. And if I was down, then you know, you just sort of roll with that. Uh, but I think the, the biggest strategy was just to get from from one leg to another in as, as best a, uh, as best a condition as humanly possible, particularly on the latter stages. I knew that those last sort of two or three legs would take a little bit longer, and that we took that into account. So we we banked a bit of extra time in the earlier stages to allow for the slower growing over the, the slightly more technical ground, if you like. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. In terms of um, uh, the mountains, what do they mean to you? Oh geez, um, I love them. Do you know? I think that re- regardless of of your of where you're from, what you do for a living, they, they can give something for everyone. For me, it can be a, a fantastic day out and with my my partner climbing or, or walking, or it can be a a testing ground for me to to sort of push myself and to see what I'm I'm sort of what I'm made of, if you like. And um, I have no hardships going into the hills. I think it's just a really special place where you can you can learn a lot about yourselves and maybe something that you don't necessarily know about yourself and um you can have some good days and you have some some bad days but you you just you have to remember why you're going there and, and what you're going for so for me it's just something really special and, and really sort of it almost reigns me in a little bit I'm quite an energetic person and I love being out so actually when you when you do sort of get yourself spanked a little bit it's quite nice it sort of reminds you that you're human and you get those rare days where you 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 really, really have a special moment. And, and I think anyone who's, who spends a lot of time in the hills would, would only know what that means to them, if that makes any sense at all. What other things have you got uh, got on the, on the horizon? Um, that's a great question. So I uh, potentially would like to do this again, um, but maybe in the summer and anti-clockwise. I've had a chat with a few people who've done it already and sort of getting their thoughts Um I'd love to, yeah. But I think probably what I'd, I'd probably more keen to look at maybe that spine or something next year, next winter. Uh, that'd be really high on my bucket list of things to do. So I'd like to try and put a bit of shift into that. And um, Cape Raft Trail as well would would sort of, yeah, and a couple of more of those like standout sort of days, longer multi, multiple days where you, again, just a bigger testing ground. And they're sort of like my aspirations. There's a couple of other local rounds here in the lakes that I'd like to do that are a little bit lesser known. And, Hopefully I'll get around to doing those over the sort of spring and, and early summer before we get busy with work again.